Hey guys, for me, one of the most powerful features in Bricks is the class system. And it's also one of the most confusing uh, features for new users, particularly if you're not really skilled with CSS. So I want to attempt to just clarify some very basics of it. Um, at its core, the class system is just a way of creating and managing CSS. So whether they're ID level styles or class level styles, um, it's just a way of creating and managing those. So you need to really understand what those are and the differences are. So I've just got a very simple WP code box here to show what that means. So in a CSS, any name here that is followed by the pound or hatch key uh, there um, is what we call an ID level style. So on a page or a DOM, uh, there should only ever be one element with a unique ID. So this is very specific to styling one thing on the page. The next thing you have is what they call classes, which have a dot in front of them. Now the classes can be applied to multiple elements. So if you want a style that applies to more than one element, it should be a class. Okay, from here, it's really about naming conventions. So that's the two differences. From here, it's really about naming conventions. And look, there is no right or wrong for this. There is just some conventions, some ideas, and whatever makes sense to you is the one that you use. What's becoming really common for Bricks users is the block element modifier or BEM naming convention. So I'm going to talk about that here. It's one I use myself. Uh, it just makes sense for keeping everything in order. Um, so I'm going to explain that here. So what you have in BEM, so the first thing we have is a block. Now a block is a dot followed by a name. And that name can only have single dashes in it. All right, so you can't have underscores, you can't have double dashes. You can only separate those names using a single dash, and that is a block. So that's like your top level. That could be a card, that could be a testimonial, could be a post, uh, whatever you want it to be. Um, it's the top level of your structure, okay? You then have what they call elements. And again, these are just classes, so that class, Semantically, as, as far as CSS goes, that class is no different to the class above it. But from our naming convention, what we do is we say, from our tutorial block, two underscores, and then another name makes that an element. So element is an element of toot block. So if I change that to title, if I change that word there to title, sorry, my cursor doesn't seem to be wanting to play with correctly here. If I change that to title, um, then title would be an element related to the toot block. Okay, so pretty straightforward. It's going to change that back. Um, and then we have what they call modifiers. Now modifier has the two dashes. So in this case here, I'm going to create a compact modifier for my toot block. So I might, on my toot block, I might use this to make everything tighter. So I might reduce my sizing and my spacing uh, because it's got the modifier on it, okay? So all the main CSS rules for toot block will be up here in the block. Anything that I want different will be put in this modifier here. Um, and that's on the block itself, but we can also put modifiers on the elements. So we can say, for example, this toot block element has a modifier which makes it red. So there's elements used in two different ways. Sorry, modifiers, one on the block, one on the element. All right, and both are correct. Uh, we then have down here what we call a utility class. And the naming of utility classes is exactly the same as the naming of blocks. So you basically, it is the words separated by dashes. Okay, that's the typical convention um, that I subscribe to. Um, and there's a big difference between a block and a utility class. And I'll explain that when I show you the actual building of this. So that's the basics of what these classes actually mean. So over in the test builder here, what I've done is I've created a grid here and I've got a block. Now this is a bricks block, which is basically a div set to flex 100% uh, width. It is not a BEM block. This is where the confusion often happens because we're talking about a block element modifier block now this could be just as easily a div and that might be a block. Okay, so a bin block. Don't convert it back to a block. So don't confuse the bricks block element with the BEM 
block CSS name. All right. Now I'll show you that as I get through that. So then we've got a block here, which is going to be my top level block here. So I'm going to call that toot block. So I'm going to name that as toot block. Okay, and underneath I've got a basic text, I've got another element, I've got another element. Now you can go through and name these correctly yourself, or I've got advanced theme, or you might notice you've got a whole bunch of extra icons around the screen here. You may not have in your uh, builder, that's because I've got advanced themer. Uh, and I'm going to use some features for activity, but you don't need it. You can do all this manually. So I'm going to use the class converter feature of um, advanced themer. I don't need my text boxes here uh, and create the classes. And all that's done is on my element here called toot block, it's created the class for me toot dash block. Exactly the same as what we had over here. Okay, and then on the elements, it's created the toot block underscore underscore element. So one right click, create classes, and we've done that. Or we could manually type those in to this box up here and press the enter key, and that would create the class for us in bricks. Okay, so that's those created. Now we also want to create a modifier on this one here. And we're going to call that modifier. I'm just going to grab this name here. I'm going to grab my toot block. Grab the name there. And if I just paste that name in there, do two dashes and then red, press the enter key, that's going to create a class for me. So I've got my element. Plus I've got the element red modifier. So that's going to have this element plus that modifier. Okay. So I've got some motorbikes going around in the background here. Um, and then on the, I'm going to duplicate this out when I'm finished. I'm going to add a modifier to the entire block as well. Okay. On the utilities, I have a utility class I've called standard border. So I'm just going to copy that name back to my test builder. And on that utility I'm in there, paste that name in there, there's my standard border, press the enter key. On the utility there, I'm just going to type in std, standard border, and click on it, because it's already created from the first time. So I've got my basic structure ready to go. All right, so I'm just going to start styling this up now and show you where the real difference is in these. So on my ID level here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my border. Again, this is AT, but you can certainly get there without doing this. I'm going to add some padding on there all the way around. Or I'm just going to use uh, you know, two rem on that all the way around. Uh, I'm going to go to my border. I'm going to add a two pixel border all the way around. Uh, make it, uh, might make it solid and make it our primary color here. Uh, it might be a bit too light, so I'll go primary dark. So I've got a border all the way around this block now, and I've got some padding on it. Okay, let's set a background on that. I'll make the background, I'll uh, we'll make it pure white. So I've got a pure white background and a border, a two pixel border around the outside. And that's my block styling done. Okay, then I'm going to come down to the that's using the ID level, I should say. So if I, all I'm styling is at, at this ID, the hash bricks uh, PM TM IK, which are automatically created for it. And I'll show you why you don't want to do this when I duplicate this out and show you how these IDs work. So then we've got my two block. So I'm going to make sure I've got my two block selected there. And on that one, I'm going to change my, set my uh, padding here all the way around to be two rem. I'm going to change my border to be, uh, maybe we'll make that two pixels again, so we can see it nice and clearly. And we make this one uh, dotted, and we'll make it, uh, I don't know, we'll make it the accent color. Doesn't look right, doesn't look like two pixels. Unless it's dotted. Make it four pixels. Four pixels. Uh, maybe we'll change it to dash so we can see it. So four pixel dashed border around there. And we'll set a background of something else. Maybe we'll make this one our primary dark. 
uh, maybe primary light. There we go. So it's a little bit different to the other one. All right. So now we've got a toot block class, which is our block level of BIM with some styling on it. All right. And the next thing we're going to do is go to our elements. And our elements, we're going to make sure our elements selected. And let's make the font size on that element a bit bigger. So we'll make that say 2 rem. There we go. And we'll make it a nice bold. And let's make it italic. All right. So you notice that both of these elements here change at the same time because they've both got this two block element class on them. So on the second one, we've got this element red modifier. So on that one, I'm going to change the color of that to be just red. Okay. So there's our structure of our block done. So I've got a two block at the top here, which is giving me this uh, yellowy background and the dotted border. I've got some basic text in there. I've got an element, so my dash dash element which is setting the text to a bigger size and italic and a bolder font. And then I've got the same element with a modifier making it red. Okay. That's the BEM styling done. So block element modifier. I'm going to come back to the other modifier on this one. I duplicate this out. Utility classes. So we go to this utility. We're going to go to standard border utility. I'm going to, on that one, let's put a... Uh, we're only going to do border, so let's do a box shadow. So I've got border on the other one, so I'm just going to do a box shadow. Oh, I'm going to make this say, I don't know, five. Oh, this is going to be a terrible looking box shadow, 20. And we'll make it black to start with. Then we'll maybe we'll take some of the transparency off that. I'm pretty sure that's. Should have called that standard box shadow. Okay, so now we've got a standard box shadow or standard border utility. If I go to this next element here, I add the standard border to that. Um, we now have the standard border. All right, now what if I wanted to change that? Actually, let's stick the utility on these other two. So let's go back to the toot block. I'm going to stick the standard border on that. Okay, now we got the shadow behind that. Go to the other one at the ID level. I'm going to stick the standard border on there. So all of these have got the standard border on them, right? What if we decided we wanted the light to come from a different direction? We're going to come from the top. Go, sorry, the shadow to go to the top instead. We go to any one of those elements. Select the standard border. Go to our border and box shadow. And we'll say minus 5, minus 5. And we'll see that every single one of these change because they have the utility class. So the use of utility class is to apply a common set of styles to multiple types of elements, regardless of what they are, regardless of whether you styled on an ID, whether you styled on BEM, whatever it is, the utility we can use for those kinds of things. It could be for rotation, for box shadows, for borders, uh, for any other effects that you want. Um, the utility classes are used to keep them consistent across multiple types of elements. Okay, whereas the BEM is about a singular block or structure, which could be a testimonial, a card, a review, it could be whatever it is. That is the styling for that structure. All right. So now I'm going to just duplicate this whole section out, and you're going to see what happens when I change things. If I go to the ID level, so we'll go to this one here, the ID level on that one, and make sure nothing's selected, and I change my background color on this one, I'll change that to be my accent color. It only changed on this one because it is a completely different ID. This ID here. It's completely different to the ID on this one up here. So they're independent of each other. All right. If I go to my tutorial block here, all right, and I decide I actually want that to be a little different. I want the color of that to be different. Let's say we want the color of that one to be here. So I go to tutorial block, go to our background, and change our color on that to be our secondary color green. All right. 
Both of them change because we're changing the block level of that group of elements. Okay, and let's say we wanted to modify this now. I'm going to add a modifier to that, which will be my copy the name, paste it in there, and I'm going to add a modifier there, which is going to be compact. All right, on the compact. I'm going to then go to my little hair and instead of 20, I'm going to make that 5. All right. So now I've reduced my padding by adding the compact. So if I wanted to do the same to this other one up here, I could go to that block here, to block here, and I just add my compact. Where are we? To block compact to that, and now that's compact as well. So the modifiers here and now we're going to modify on the block we're going to modify on the element so the block is for the compact the element is for the color so that is the beauty of using block element modify naming all right now this utility class here let's say we decide on that utility class for our standard border you know that that's just too light and it's too too broad so we're going to go to our border in our box shadow here and we're going to make that less so we just make that 10 pixel and we're not going to make it as dark uh, as light we're going to actually put a little bit more shadow on there okay so now we've every one every one of these utility classes so all of these blocks all get updated because they're all using that utility class so utilities spread across multiple elements just makes sense uh, BEM style when you want to create a structure for anything that you want to reuse throughout the page or the site and ID level style only makes sense if you're only going to apply that style to that one element on that one page and nowhere else and that's pretty much the the gist of how these work so hopefully that makes sense and I'm going to show you one more thing actually while we're looking at this I've got advanced theme which allows me to do this if I look at my uh, component class manager now look at my two block i can see from using the bricks ui this is the css that it's created that it's going to uh, put on to the uh, dom uh, if i have a look at the compact that's the css that it's created if i look at the elements that's the css it created and if i have a look at the two block element red that's the css it created so if you look at these, look at these names here, they're exactly what I showed you over in here, but Bricks is creating it for you by simply changing settings in the UI. It applies those to those CSS rules. Okay, now there's one last thing I'm going to go, it's a little bit more advanced that in Bricks, which makes this extremely powerful. And that is the way the root keyword works if you're styling it the uh, using the CSS. So what we're going to look at is a two block here and we're going to go to our CSS tab and here we're going to go root. So root there and then we're going to target a element. So I'm going to target say, we just called it element. So I'm just going to go root element. So, so just by saying root and then the element name. So root will translate into the Select the class, which is the wrong one. Uh, it's, we've got to be very careful of in bricks. Select the correct class. So it's the toot block we want to be targeting. Uh, we want to go root. So root is the same as saying toot block. Dash dash element means you want to target the element from that block. Okay. And let's say we want the color to be white. Okay. If you look over on the editor here, you'll see now they've all changed to white. All right. So that you can see as you build out your elements, if it's a more you know complex structure, uh, it's a card, it's got multiple things on it. It's really, really simple to target those elements just by using the root keyword, underscore, underscore, and then the element name, which should be the same name that you put over on the uh, uh, structure panel here so that it makes sense. Um, and then you can easily create your CSS and know that root, underscore, underscore, element, relates to this here that element all right so hopefully that is in depth enough but not too confusing um, for explaining how this all relates together so i uh, hope this makes sense to you thanks for listening guys